the confirmation of his death. He had reportedly suffered a stroke over the weekend. Vitaly Shevchenko from the BBC's monitoring Russian team has been following the story for us and we can speak to him now. Um, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Uh, he was reported to be one of the most ruthless uh, leaders in the world. Would you go along with that? Uh, well, yes, that's the allegation that's been voiced by numerous rights groups. Uh, they, they called the government of Uzbekistan one of the worst authoritarian regimes in, in the world. And uh, it tightly controlled the media. Uh, it tolerated no dissent. And um, there were unconfirmed allegations that uh, key opponents of the government were boiled alive. And, of course, there's been this swirling of rumours that he had died a couple of days ago. Was this to prevent a power vacuum, do you think, that they delayed announcing the news? Well, we have to remember, of course, that uh, Uzbekistan is a very secretive regime and uh, disclosing its inner workings to the public is not something that the government in Tashkent are used to doing. And also we uh, have to realise that... Um, there's no tried and tested uh, mechanism of succession in Tashkent. So it's, yes, it's reasonable to assume that all these days uh, there's been some uh, uh, power dealing uh, going on behind the scenes in uh, Uzbekistan. So no tried and tested uh, method of succession. What's your best get the, guess as to who steps into the role? Uh, well, reading the signs that are coming uh, from uh, Uzbekistan, it's... Uh, likely that the uh, current prime minister uh, is, is in pole position. Uh, for example, he's been appointed the head of the committee uh, that is organising uh, President Karimov's uh, funeral. And in the post-Soviet tradition, it's, it's a key indicator that this man is in charge. And also, uh, he is said to have uh, the backing of uh, the country's security services. And also, another regional player, Russia, uh, says, uh, is said to favour him. Um, and is he a, a slightly lighter touch? What's, what, what's his background? Um, uh, well, uh, it's hard to see Uzbekistan turning into a vibrant democracy after President Karimov's demise. After all, uh, the, the Prime Minister, Shavkat Mirzayoyev, is, is his choice, and, and there's a very good reason why Karimov appointed him. So it's, it's very likely that, uh, at least for the time being, he, is, he, he will continue uh, the kind of policy pursued by his predecessor. And Vitaly, how much of a say do you think the Kremlin would have had in uh, the successor's appointment? Um, it's hard to say, but Uzbekistan is uh, perhaps unique in Central Asia in, in being very actively, in actively resisting uh, Russia's clout and influence. For example, it pulled out of a key uh, military alliance led by Russia. Uh, so while uh, Moscow is keen to make sure that whoever takes charge in Tashkent leans towards Russia, not the West, it's... It's probably a, an overstatement to say that um, the Kremlin had a direct role in, in, uh, in what's going on uh, in Tashkent. All right, there we must leave it. Vitaly Shevchenko, thanks for your analysis there. One of the country's 